So within the quadratic formula is this very important part of it, this b squared minus 4ac. This bit here we call the discriminant. So it doesn't include the um, square root. It's just what's within that b squared minus 4ac. Now, the reason why that's so important is really down to that square root, because you can only square root particular numbers. You can only square root numbers that are greater than or equal to 0. So if that discriminant were ever to become negative, then we would hit problems, because we would not be able to square root it. So this discriminant, sometimes we label as this triangle, OK, you don't have to use this, but this triangle represents b squared minus 4ac. OK, now what's going to happen when that discriminant is negative? So the discriminant is negative. What we're going to have is that the square root does not exist. And if you can't square root, well, there are no real solutions to square rooting uh, that negative number. So if that part of it doesn't work, then the whole thing doesn't work. And so what that means is that there are no roots, no real roots, to the quadratic equation. Because remember that we've got this situation where this quadratic um, is either crossing well, not crossing the x-axis at all, or it crosses it at one point, or it crosses it at two distinct points. OK, so we've got here two real roots, as we would call them, two real distinct roots. So we should probably put distinct next to that. Here we've got one real root, which we often refer to as a repeated root. And here we've got no real roots, because that line does not cross the curve. So when we've got this discriminant, that bit inside the square root is uh, negative, and so you can't square root it, and so that must mean that there are no values of x that it works for. So this means that there are no real roots. Now, if that discriminant is equal to 0, what we get is that we have x equals minus b plus or minus, well, that discriminant is 0, so the square root of 0 all over 2a. Now, the square root of 0 is just 0, so that means that x is equal to minus b over 2a. And so because a and b can only take on singular values, there is only one solution, one real root. So one real repeated root. Now why do we say that it's repeated? Now that's a particularly good question. The reason why is that if this value was uh, let's say minus 2, okay, then I would know that if this was a translation of the x squared curve, this curve would have the equation y is equal to x plus 2 squared. So it has this repeated root, as we say, because it's got a, well, it's like um, a repeated factor. So that's where this idea of a repeated root comes from. So you could say that um, you've got x equals minus b plus 0 over 2a, or you could say minus b minus 0 over 2a, in which case they're both exactly the same, and that's why we would say that they are repeated. 
Now, if that discriminant is greater than zero, then that means that this can be found. This square root of this number will just give us another number. And so we've actually got something that looks like this. Okay? Well, let's not use a question mark. Let's use a, a triangle. Okay? So minus b plus the square root of the discriminant over 2a or minus b minus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. So this point here would be x equals minus b minus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. And this point would be x equals minus b plus the square root of the discriminant over 2a. And you get these two distinct real roots. So the value of the discriminant will identify for you which situation you're looking at. So that, you know, if you needed to show that a quadratic, um, well, if you were asked to, to determine whether the quadratic had no real roots, one real repeated root, or two distinct real roots, you could just use the discriminant, and that will tell you. If it's less than zero, you have no real roots. Equal to zero, it's one repeated real, real root. And if it's greater than zero, it's two distinct real roots. And that's what we can use it for.